So again, we're going to start by looking at the parabola that we started with. This is in a different form. The other first two examples that we did were in the standard form of the equation. The standard form of the equation gives us our vertex right away. What is the name of this form of the equation? The factored form. What does the factored form tell us right away? It tells us our x-intercepts. So when we have the factored form of the equation, we know right away that one of our x-intercepts is at 1 and the other x-intercept is at negative 1. That's helpful. The factored form is also helpful because it tells us something about the vertex. How do both of those x-intercepts tell us something about the vertex? We can find the vertex because it has to be right in between the two of them, right? Because a parabola is symmetrical. And so if you have both your x-intercepts, you know your vertex lies right in between there. So right between 1 and negative 1 is 0. And it's not hard to plug in 0 into this equation. Because if I plug in 0 for x, I'm going to get negative times negative 1 times 1, which is going to be positive 1. Because negative times negative 1 times positive 1 will be positive 1. We know this parabola goes down, which all of our points indicate that that's going to be true. If we wanted to label some other points on here, we could. We have the point 2 comma negative 3 and negative 2 negative 3. So we use the factored form to get our x-intercepts. Once we had our x-intercepts, we knew that our vertex had to be right in between them. So we knew it had to be when x was 0. And then we could plug that in to find out what y would have to be. Okay? Another way that some people find the vertex is they go back to the old way. Can I change this to standard form? Sometimes you have to complete the square. Sometimes you have to do a little bit more work. This one, when I multiply this out, because the inside is a difference of squares, I get negative x squared minus 1. Because the inside is a difference of squares that's factored. If I distribute that negative, you get negative x squared plus 1. So just by multiplying it out, it actually changes it perfectly into standard form. Usually that doesn't happen. Usually you'd have to continue on to complete the square. But from here, can you see that the vertex is at 0, 1, which is what we drew? And that, because it's negative, it would go over 1, down 1, over 1, down 3, and so on and so forth. So there's a little bit of review on some parabola stuff, factored form and standard form. Now that we've got our parabola, are we going to have any vertical asymptotes? when we graph the reciprocal. So if we're going to try to graph 1 over negative x minus 1, x plus 1, we're going to get them at 1 and negative 1. We're also going to have an asymptote at y equals 0. we're not going to have anything other than 0. The only way it would be something other than 0, like if I wanted to move it up 1, I would have to add 1 after my equation. That would move everything up 1. If I wanted to move it up 2, I'd have to add 2 up after my equation. But we're not going to deal with that right now. That happens more next year in grade 12, where you have them in different places. But for what we're going to look at, they're going to be right here. So, what does this mean for us? Now we can look at our points. Can you see that you're still going to have 0, 1? Because if you did 1 over 1, it would still be 1. 2, negative 3 
is going to be 2, 1 over negative 3. And we also had negative 2, negative 3. So now we'll have negative 2, 1 over negative 3. And once we have a point in each of the sections separated by our vertical asymptotes, can you see that our vertical asymptotes separated into three sections? We're not talking about the horizontal one separated into any sections, just our vertical ones. Once we have these three points, we have enough information to say, well, I know this section's going to have to look like this. This section's going to look like this. And that section has to look like that. What kind of graph do we have? Batman. How do I know the one in the middle goes up? Because on this graph, that has to be a maximum. So for this one in that section, it has to be a minimum. So that also helps us tell that that has to go up at that point. 7, 8, and 11C.